everyone in the world can make films. I think the only way to, to learn the cinema is to make films. I don't believe in academies and lessons. I, I, I think it's a profession that you have to start by, you know, by the first word, doing it. Il tournerait, euh, il tournerait n'importe quoi. Il, il adore, euh, il, il adore ça. Et, euh, à la limite, euh, ce qu'il filme n'a pas d'importance. <rire> il faut qu'il filme. C'est un malade de la caméra. Franco confesses to being an unrepentant voyeur. From behind his camera, he watches a world of his own creation, filming the bizarre tales that his fertile imagination has dreamed up. He's seeing everything through a lens, you know, through the shutter, through filters, and just seeing everything through a camera, and judging it through a camera. He loves a lot the milieu carceral féminin, the vampires, the euh, fantastic. Euh Sexe et le fantastique. Euh, euh, oui, c'est toujours un petit peu le même monde. C'est pour ça, c'est un univers. Many Franco films feature weird nightclub acts. He shoots these sadistic set pieces in a series of shocking close-ups, and suddenly his camera pulls back. And we become part of the audience, aware for the first time that we are watching a show. Thank you. Franco uses this strange and disorientating device in film after film. He's obviously a man who loves filmmaking. He loves having a camera in his hand. Uh, the other thing he loves is women. You have lovely breasts, firm and ripe. They need to be caressed and loved. I'll take your pants off for you. Oh, yes. Ce qu'il montre des femmes n'est jamais méprisant. Il n'a pas un regard salace. Il a un regard euh, amoureux. Sur, euh, sur les femmes, sur le corps des femmes. Les femmes qu'il emploie, notamment Lina Romé, est complètement dénisibée par rapport, euh, par rapport au sexe. The only thing I could really praise Jesus Franco for is his choice in, not women, but a woman, Lina Romé. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, what a woman. His eyes expressed his hopeless longing for her, but his heart denied him the courage to speak. Lina euh, n'aurait jamais eu la vie qu'elle a, qu a, qu a eue si elle n'avait pas rencontré Gess Franco. Il a été son pygmalion, on peut dire. Euh, Lina, elle aurait été petite vendeuse de, 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 de prises uniques euh, en Espagne. Oh, Michael, you're here. We've been waiting for you. Three is much nicer. Michael, come make love with us. Elle doit tout à Franco. Lina was only 18 when she met Franco. He was looking for a new type of female star and believed that Lena might be the one. The first major test that he set her was to play the title role in his 1973 film, The Female Vampire. You know that there are two versions. One is a, uh, a regular traditional vampire and a vampire who need human semen. <coughs> When the vampire uh, need uh, blood for life, she kills the people, beating them as a, a traditional or regular vampire. Do you feel ill at ease being the descendant of a family of vampires? And on the other version, is she needs human semen, and she makes the necessary with the men. Or with the woman. And uh, at this time, for censorship, it was impossible <laughs> when we decided to make the movie.
to use the human semen version. Two years after came legal porno. So we were able to sell the movie uh, over the world in the human semen version. It's like a kind of bewitching. Once we start to see the movie, you can't stop. There is something special. Quand on tournait une scène de, de cul, euh, il, il mettait les choses en place euh, très vaguement par rapport aux positions des, des gens. Et puis euh, après, il faisait bon. Et maintenant, message. <rire> When I told somebody in America, uh, a chap who writes um, for Fangoria, he said, my goodness, you're working for Jess Franco? I said, yes. He said, well, do you, do you, do you, do you know his work? No, I said, no. He said, well, one, he's very good. Two, you have to be very careful. Yeah, that's it. Go on, try to escape. I'll soon tame you, my pretty beast. He's like a puppet master. You can take, you know, the toughest producer, the worst actor, whatever, stick him in a room with Frank, and after half an hour, you know, the guy will just, you know, fall for him. He will just do whatever he wants. And I got on really well with him. He loves, he loves actors. Jess Franco loves very much actors. You know as well as I do that our readers eat up those sadomasochistic stories of yours. Oh. <laughs> I don't invent anything. It's all based on real life experience, not my personal experience. Quand il a envie de faire quelque chose, il en parle avec un, un tel appétit que euh, bon, on a envie de on a envie de l'aider. <laughs> Franco made films at a furious pace, sometimes in only a few weeks. His stories rarely made sense. Il faut appeler un docteur. Il faudrait it was as though he was turning the camera on himself, filming his daydreams. Often he played bizarre cameos in his own movies. I don't know why she did it. I know she did, but don't ask me why, because I'm not God. Because all those people pretend that the director is God. <laughs> Just like, like to speak, but uh, he don't like questions. The Countess of Karlstein. I would like to talk to her. <laughs> he tells what he wants to tell, and he tells a lot of things, but never what you, uh, you want to hear. <laughs> I want to see her. <coughs> He's dedicated to B movies, you know. He said he wants to make B movies because he likes B movies. He doesn't want to make, you know, big statements about society or all that because he hates it. C'est vrai que s'il avait fait d'autres films, il aurait peut-être eu une carrière euh, plus plus intéressante. Il a fait ce qu'il ce qu'il avait envie de faire, je pense. Franco wrote his own scripts, operated his own camera, composed the music and often acted in his own movies. In this way, he was much closer to a novelist or painter than to a commercial filmmaker. Provided he finished on time and in budget, he had almost total freedom to film what he wanted. À chaque fois que tu vois un film de Jess Franco, même si le film n'est pas une grande réussite, 
il y a toujours une séquence très chouette qui te reste après et qui te donne des idées pour plus tard et tout. People who are really into into cinema are getting tired of uh, of Hollywood. We must know evil to be able to fight it. They're looking for something different. They're looking for something which is which is personal, which is strange, which is experimental, which is um, you know just different. And if you're looking for that, I think Franco is 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 perfect because he represents the type of cinema which people do because they love it. I think uh, I, I stopped counting the pro lately, but, but uh, about uh, 158 or something like that. 58, 59. Uh, thank you, Jess Franco, to make so beautiful film for us. Franco is like those eccentric artists who make cathedrals out of bottle tops. We don't know why they do it, but we applaud their oddball originality. In a film world based on compromise and conformity, he stands tall, a unique figure of whom it can truly be said, we'll never see his like again. Mm.